Yeah. I'm not, I'm not impressed. I don't, I don't blame him. I think it's top to bottom. Organ We're talking about the Mariners, by the way, top to bottom yeah, organization. Yeah. But uh, for, for, from what I can understand, service hasn't got a lot to work with. And that may be both sides of the much of a manager on the one hand and not much of an organization on the other. It's a bad combination. Well, bad but, combination. you know, they're consistently, they're minor league, they're minor league uh, uh, teams and organizations consistently ranked in the top four or five. They get these players that are supposed to be um, you know, great prospects would make the baseball card, the prospects baseball card, but they get to safe, uh, they get to T-Mobile and look at the guy Winker that they brought over from the Reds. What, happen, what, happened guy. what happened to him? Well, he was an all-star last year and this year he can't hit his way out of a paper bag. He can't do anything. And time and, and you know, if this was a one-off or maybe a two-off over a period of time, would say, uh, you know, it's just something, you know, something. Uh, they get to Seattle to figure out how to play ball. Why is yeah. that? And, we, and and over the years, we have seen it um, a, a number of times. Uh, you know, I, I mean, we can go back and think about how many players were signed here or were traded here and just did after they got here, didn't perform. And to Kevin Mitchell, because I was certain he was going to be a, a mariner of, of some worth. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got Kevin Mitchell. You have um, Scott Spezio, who was a, a stud with the Angels and got he here. Was. You know, it all came apart. He was uh, a world champion. Uh, uh, um, who's the third baseman? Cirillo. Jeff Cirillo came here at third base. Got here and just, just never... Never. Well, you know who loves you know who loves to come to Seattle is Mike Trout. He just loves he, he wants you know the apartment that the Beatles were in down at the uh, edge of modern edge water. Edge water, yeah. Fiction out of the room. He wants that room. He's going to stay here. He'll travel with the Angels when he has to, but for the most part, he wants to end his career right now, batting against the Mariners. Well, it's just it's ridiculous. They get a Cy Young award now again. Pitching is not, I don't think they're tantamount problem right now. I think this club has no confidence in it. You look at the faces, they look beat. And um, this is batting practice, right? <laughs> yeah, it just, it, 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 and I, I just don't know. I wish I could, I wish I knew, and maybe something, maybe before I die, I'll, it'll be revealed to me. Uh, what the secret is, but there is something about players that come to Seattle. And it, it just seems to fall off of the wagon. And maybe it's the weather. Maybe, maybe the weather affects people more. Maybe you go out there and it's a cold night when you're expecting summer, you're expecting the heat up. And, and, you know, you go, what the heck, you know, what am I doing here? Um, maybe it's the travel. You know, you're on the Reds, you travel, you know, our plane right here, our plane right there, our plane right there. You come here and an hour, you're not even out of the state. <laughs> you're still they, nowhere near look, the you're in Idaho. <laughs> you're nowhere near the nearest team. And that team's in another league. Oh no, there's Oakland, and then there's the Angels. But uh, the Angels are not a team right now that is has any confidence. They just got well for the first long time in the whole long streak that cost them their manager. And they're getting well, of course, at the expense of the Mariners. Well, that seems to be, you know, part of what's going on, but they, you know, over the last, I'm trying to think now, I think it was the last before this series that the, the starting pitch, he had an ERA in the, in the four or five games before that of like one point something. And they lost three of those, three or four of those, get three to, out of four of those games. All you got to do is score one run to beat them, huh? Yeah. I, I mean, it's phenomenal. They have no offense whatsoever, nothing. There's not a feared hitter in that lineup. Ty France is the closest they come. 
to somebody that might be able to hurt you. And we all know, we've seen lineups with one feared hitter, what happens? So what's the general manager going to say? I know we don't have any of the guys in the lineup, but we're going to fire you, whoever you are, fill in the blank. You're going to fire an executive. You're going to fire the manager. You're going to fire the third base coach, the hitting coach. I, I, I Well, you know, somebody's going to have to take the fall. Somebody's going to have to be a sacrificial lamb. And would it make any sense to fire an executive? Uh, are these executives so ensconced that they're that they're free of uh, inspection or responsibility when the play when the play is this bad? Well, you know the plan that Jerry Depoto put out when he was brought in as general manager sounded like a sound a good one. We're going to strip the club down. We're going to use uh, draft picks and trades to get young talent, bring them up through the minors, and. You know, and in three or four years, five years, we'll have a bunch of guys who have played together, you know, similar to what the Mets did back in the early, uh, in the early uh, 80s. You know, you had all those guys, uh, Brooks and, and Strawberry and Gooden and uh, Backman and all those guys playing together. Yeah, it was a good. And so they came up, they brought the manager up from AAA, Davey Johnson, and now, they were, uh, you know, they were an established um, team and they knew each other and they knew the, the good and the bad about each other. And they were able to, to capitalize in it. Other teams have done it as well. So the idea on paper looks sound. Well, you've seen it in action. How, what, what, what changes would you make if you had the opportunity? Oh, man, I, 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 you know, Michael, I'm kind of stumped because the guys they have there should be good. They, you know, they, they lost a piece of the team in Seager last year that everybody kind of discounted. But I think he was one of those guys who were in the clubhouse, you know, like a, a Jay Buhner type yeah. who are in the clubhouse and keep things hold people responsible. I don't know. I don't go to the clubhouse, but um, um, it doesn't seem like that's the story. They don't have that guy. In they don't, it doesn't seem like they have that guy right now. Maybe they do. And I just haven't seen it, but it, it, it doesn't seem like that person is there. Well, if there's no lead, if there's no leadership, then you got to hire a leader, a real leader, and it's got to be somebody as uncompromisingly a leader as Joe Madden might be. Might be. Well, you know, I mean, there's there's something to be said for shaking it up like that. There's something to be said for bringing uh, some fresh blood in. If uh, you can't hit the ball, I'll, the I'll, way the Mariners operate. No, you're right. You're right. But. You know, you, you have to do something. You can't, you can't let it sit like it's sitting or you're going to have nobody in the stands by July 4th. And nobody on the bench, really. Everybody you know, making their golf plans. Yeah. I mean, really, you, you, you're really uh, treading on, on, you know, forget it's early. I mean, it'd have to go something like 63 and 39 or something. To, to to make the playoffs. Not going to happen. And you know what it's like. Guys with contracts who can't get out are depressed about it. Right. Guys with no contract who can't get out, can get out, are telling their agents, get me. Get me somewhere. Get me a look. I'll take a minor league contract and play my way onto the team. I'll go somewhere. Please get, you know, the trading deadline is coming up. Get me out of here. Um, who do you have to trade? Giants are interested. You got a starting pitcher? You got yeah, a power hit, power got, hitter from the outfield. They got yeah, I mean they got Ty France, but you know if you trade these guys, if you are you going to trade the guy you just signed, Robbie Ray, the Cy Young, you know uh, the the reigning Cy Young Award winner, are you going to trade him for prospects? Uh, I mean it, it's it's time that this team did better than that you know that they brought in better than prospects. But again, have you got I, a good catcher? We need a catcher. Well, we yeah, we do have a good catcher, but 
they're not going to trade him. I mean, catchers are uh, not easy to come by. Good. I one. need a catcher who can hit 320. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you got you got you have good catchers, but to have a a, a you know a, a a great catcher, there's not a lot of them out there. You know, You're catchers right got to become the shortstop of the of the uh, of, of the twenties. You know, where it's you know good defense, not a lot of stick. Um, speaking of, uh, the baseball teams that we love, the Pittsburgh pirates pulled something off yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. They got a rookie named Jack Suwinski. Yes. yes. Whose father came to see him play. And what did he do? He hit three home runs and he is the very first rookie to hit three home runs. When the third home run was the walk-off finisher for the game. He wins. He, he comes up in the first inning, hits one, hits one in the fifth, comes up at the end of the game. With, with the Giants right on their neck, hits another home run for the walk-off victory. And although I hate that, I say, well, the Pirates pulled one out. They took one out of three. We won two out of three. But they did it with um, old-fashioned style. It was really this kid yeah. can when hit. The do something, they tend to do it <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, a, in a nice fashion. I got to admit that, you know, as bad as they are, uh, they're definitely the Pirates of the Seattle Mariners of the uh, of the National League. Well, the uh, Giants will take Jack Sawinski if he's available. He wants well, to keep and he's job. So, you know what I like about him? He is, you know, for whatever reason, people, you know, people with uh, Slavic, Polish last names fit into, into Pittsburgh so well. I mean, if this guy is anything, he could be a hero. Well, don't you want an outfield with Sawinski and Yastrzemski? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I could. I, I would love to hear John Miller trying to get through that. <laughs> oh, he'll make it. Don't worry about Miller. He'll make it. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a uh, uh, Crook and uh, Kruko and, uh, and um, Kuiper. Kuiper. Yes, thank you. Uh, that they ought to be <laughs> ought to be worried about. You know, the, um, the the same guy that came up with the idea about putting a, sec, a man at second base in the 10th inning so you don't have, so you can score easily, that ridiculous idiotic rule that is both given and taken away already from my team this year and from yours as well. Yeah. The same guy that came up with that rule came up with some today. And you'd think that nothing like this would be accepted, but his rules and his ideas are so awful that it happened. The Warriors' victory parade will be in San Francisco today, the usual place up and down Market Street. The no speeches. So the team will not be allowed to hello, thanks for coming out. There'll be no speeches, no grandstanding. And Draymond Green said, well, then I'll just stay in my crib. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know how this is going to happen. I, they've got to reconsider. Yeah, well, all the, why, all the team- why is that? What, what reason has is, is been given for that? I don't know. They always have it. 49ers had it. Giants had it. Yeah, I'm saying. In the war, what, what, in the war, yeah, what, what reason they, are they giving for not giving speeches? This year, it's something new. A terrible idea that's new. Brand new. I mean, are they afraid that Steve Kerr is going to get up there and ask uh, people to for gun control? <laughs> you know, I mean, please. He will. And so will Draymond Green. They'll, they'll, they'll talk, they'll, they'll trash talk their way. And the team's been partying. Maybe it's because they, they said that the team's been drunk since Boston. They had a big party in Boston. They came in uh, hung over. They had a shower, changed their bags. Half the team took this company plane and went to Vegas where they continued to party. And then they came back here for the parade and they've been partying since then. So, well, they won a world which, championship. They should be partying. They should be. No, and you know what? It's the fourth one, so now they know how to party, and now they know what they want to do. And now and now they know what their teams are like after they take ayahuasca. Right, and, and, and they did it again. You know, it was amazing to me how many people sold them out after they lost the first game. And sold them out early in the season, too. You guys are never getting anywhere with this team. You're old and stupid. It was it was just amazing to me how many people I know are Warrior fans. Um, well, that's it. That's it. That's all. That's it. We're done. We're cooked. On to the Giants. On to something else. 
I'm going to go to my cabin in the woods. You know, I'm out who needs to watch the rest of this. And, and I'm, you know, right. I'm sitting there right. Well, wait a second. It's one freaking game. Well, the worst thing about sports radio is talking to sports fans just like that. Who have who just haven't got a clue about what's going to happen in the world that they live in. It's not, it's not, it's not written out ahead of time. It's not fate. You can lose right. one game. Shut now you can't again. lose two games. You want to lose the first two games, you got a problem. You're shut in, it you're again. Deep shit. I yeah, said yeah. it again, I'll say it again. They the, the Boston Celtics fans bit their own asses. Yeah, they did. They yeah. came in and they, they wanted to get loud, they wanted to curse people, they wanted to get in people's faces. They thought that that Boston crap was gonna work. And uh, the only thing you did is you made somebody a little more pissed off. And when you piss people off, they tend to uh, go above and beyond. And Boston had to watch it happen in their garden. They brought it on to themselves. They had to watch all the bad stuff happen right in their home, right in their home. Yeah, I, uh, I wonder if that's worse for Boston. Oh, yeah, I think I so. Mean, I, you know, I, I, I wonder how many people really, <clears throat> I mean, the team is probably upset about it, but the fans are like, Oh, I've gotten out of the bar. <laughs> but where else can you go in Boston, right? Boston fans are, they're, they're a different breed, man. You know, this is the only, these are the only baseball fans that, that 10 of them could be sitting at a game in Kansas City against the Red Sox and the Royals. And they break out into a Yankee suck chant at, you know, in the, in the fifth inning. Just so you know. Yankee Sark. Don't disagree with you, but <laughs> you know, um, yeah, the Yankees could be nowhere near them. And they feel like, okay, we gotta, we gotta chant. Speaking Yankees of the Sark. Yankees, I spent some money the other day, like the Yankees do every day. Went by my favorite gas station, which was the last place I bought gas for $5.95. I had to pay six. 79 and now gas is on its way down but for half tank that cost me uh dollars uh, you know what the hell is is what is biden waiting for you got to call out the national guard over here i mean really what is he what is he what is he hoping to accomplish by waiting at the very least you know what drop the federal gas tax for now 18, 20 cents a gallon, whatever it is. Well, then the government takes it on the chin and the, and the oil companies make full profit. Yeah, well, but <clears throat> short of short of Biden saying, I'm going to freeze everything and you're going to get this, and it's essentially not nationalizing the oil, oil companies, but certainly putting a limit on what they can charge. Well, if I were an individual kind of making it. They can make um, and you know that the oil companies have big enough lobbies in Congress that that's going to, you know, I mean, I'd love to see him say, hey, you know what? Gas goes down to, uh, uh, you know, four, $3.50 a gallon on uh, on Sunday. And uh, you guys are entitled to make 20% on your money. They've already made billions, $80 billion, $90 yeah. billion, $40 billion for all the top five, the five top pr producers have already already put that money in the bank. And they've done it on the backs of the American people. They don't care about the gouging and the damage that they're doing. And until they're stopped, they will continue to gouge and overcharge with no justification, no explanation, and no prayer of even anybody standing in their way or saying anything negative about them. They're worse than the NRA because they are, they are fully protected by the people who have to regulate them. Right. Right. They spread more money around. They, no, no, listen, I've experienced oil companies all my life. I know what they, you know, the, the tricks that they play and the Tough things business. they do and all of the different um, manifestations of dirty business. Uh, I've seen it time and time again when I was growing up with my father and how they screwed him. Uh, you know, almost at every turn. And they're, they're heartless, cruel, calculating, um, 
companies that know that they have the best lawyers and the best people that are working for them. And they have a product that you can't do without. Yeah, I mean, they know they got you. It's like the electric company. They know they got you. And only in certain situations, uh, you know, do, do like here in Seattle, where at one point the city said, well, we're not going to, um, we're, we're not going to buy into that. We're going to form our own electric company and you'll pay us for the power and the city will have it. And there'll be a certain limit to what the city can make. And that's it. We're here as a, as a public service, not as a profit making corporation. A public and, utility district. Yeah, and the and the city runs electric, and it works great, no problems. Yeah, it's a little bureaucratic at times. Fair pricing. Uh, but yeah, the fair pricing and and different programs and a lot of different things to go on. City Light, I think, is one of the best utilities in the city. Where if you go to uh, in the country. But, you know, if you go to Con Edison in New York, which is a private company, you, you, you tend to get screwed. You know, the other side to this that's beyond financial, the erosion of American confidence that the oil companies are foisting on us, that they are profiting from, that they are creating and exploiting. Now, CNN did an interesting headline today that it really caught me. The national mood is tense, anxious, expectant, uncertain. So let's screw them. All companies say, that's the mood. Let's take advantage before because we're the ones who can do it. We're the ones that can put it. You're feeling, you're feeling anxious or expectant or tense. We can make that worse. We can put pressures on you and your family. We can ruin your company because you can't deliver the goods because of the costs. We can increase, increase the price of everything from tomatoes to marijuana to gasoline to you name it. You want a nice new shirt? You want a blue Mets shirt? You want one that says, send the beer man? We can add $1.85 to every one of those sold. And we can do that like this. And here's another thing. You can't stop us. Joe Biden won't stop us. No senator will say anything against us. If you're feeling anxious and tense, just go to the gas station and we can make that worse and it's going to get worse again and then we can make it worse again and what do we say we say trust us we're doing the best we can it's not our fault it's the saudis well and, and let me let me advance this as in the realm of possibility and you tell me if you think that it's crazy or that it's it's plausible and that is so biden gets into office he shuts down the keystone uh, not the Keystone, but one of the uh, one of the uh, the pipelines, mm -hmm. and um, he stops the oil drilling leases on certain uh, federal lands that have environmental. I think in in, in um, can the government do that? Can they pull the lease? Well, like they just stopped selling them. I don't know if they pulled them, but but they put like a ban or something. I forget exactly what it was. But it was something where they could no longer drill on certain federal lands. I think it was parklands. They were allowed to drill on certain parklands, and they stopped that. He said, well, we're not going to do that right now. Right. So Biden, obviously, is bad for the oil companies. <laughs> he's not, not he's bad, not, not bad enough. That's, but that's minor league compared to what they, their, the windfall profits that they're involved with right now. Right. But... If you're the oil companies, if you're all these guys, you get into a room and you're still passing around that gold telephone that, uh, you know, the, the premier in, in Cuba gave you. And here's office. Biff Jiggerman from AT&T. Thank you for the phone. Thank you, Biff. <laughs> a present from Biff Jiggerman. Um, <laughs> so you want Biden out of office. Yeah, you do. You, you, don't, want, you don't want Biden in office anymore. And here's how to get rid of him. He's pushing electric cars. He's pushing uh, uh, alternative energy. He's pushing wind power. He's, he's driving. He, yeah, he's driving that Ford 150 electric. And right. Showing, showing how fast it goes. Right. Yeah. He's, he's showing. He's show, and, and he didn't crash it. So maybe there's something to it. Um, 
what do you want to do? You want to get rid of Biden, don't you? Well, what's the best way of getting rid of somebody without killing them? Raise, raise the, uh, raise the price of gas. At, at, at the very short, at the very in the short term, you get a Republican wave because, of course, they're going to promise that they can. They can fix it. Fix it. And of course they will, because after they elect Republicans to Congress in the midterms, they'll drop the price. Oh, look, we found all this oil we didn't know we had in the garage in Brooklyn. Or they, uh, or they, or they won't, as I say. That was good, but you know, we're, we're, we're used to this type of profit level. We, we think it's good for the country. We think it promotes co- conservation. Well, it's good for us. It's, it's so good, we're gonna keep it. It's good for the oil companies. We but got, it's we not got some out money. Of the we're possibility keep. that these people would get together and conspire to get by that office, and the easiest way for them to do that is raise the price of gasoline. Raise prey the upon, price prey upon, yeah. You prey upon a country. A, you prey upon a tense country, thinking the only solution is to get rid of one guy and give me someone who's never been president before. Right. We got. We got. Uh, Ron DeSantis. We got balls. We're gonna. We can. We can do what we want. We've. We've done this in other countries. We've toppled dictatorships, in uh, Saudi Arabia. You know, wherever, wherever we're drilling for oil. We've gone down to Venezuela until I got the the guy that has a few brains there, Chavez. Um, you know, we were stealing the oil from them. We were stealing the oil for Ara- from Arabs for how long? We're still stealing it from Syria today. That doesn't even have a government. It's just there's oil there, and we're there, and there's money to be made there. We and just don't give any to the Syrians. We'll, get, we'll take the oil. We won't give you any Syrians any of the of the profit. Yeah, Syrian people aren't getting it. Some, you know, some some oil executive. So, is, is it out of the realm of possibility to say that these people are, are playing the tricks that they used to play on other countries now in this country? And they're calling it inflation when the, the reason that every price has gone up is because it's all keyed to the price of gasoline, all the deliveries, all the inter, interstate yeah. trucking. Look at the price of, of diesel. Yeah. If you get gasoline, I mean, I bet your diesel's eight bucks a gallon by you. It's close to seven here. And that makes tomatoes and pasta and wine and lunch tomorrow and breakfast. Yep, you more you, expensive than you know, it was, and all that's your trucks, all your trucks. So don't call it inflation. Cheese. Call it gouging. Call it opportunistic money grabbing. Call it a threat to the national security. That's what you should call it because that's what it amounts to. When you yeah. have a company, when you have a company that threatens the existence of its customers, that's not a good company. They're, they're, they're no better than a drug dealer. In fact, don't dealers have some sort of unwritten code because the gas company. Dealing with one is like dealing with the other. Yeah, you, well, it is because don't forget that how many years ago under, um, I think it was Clinton, but it might have been Bush, uh, the Texas oil man, um, <laughs> that these companies merged and consolidated. So it's not like you have 25 different companies anymore. You got Chevron in Texaco. Then it's Exxon. Again, you got Shell and... and uh, Exxon. Exxon. They're together. You have uh, BP with somebody. Yeah, you know, I mean, all of these companies now. There's, there's three companies, four companies. That's it. And they div- they've divided up the market. Standard says our gas is going to cost more than anybody's. And BP with Arco out here on the West Coast says our gas is going to cost the least of all. If you but if you get a bargain, you can't get a bargain at a Shell station, or a mobile station. You can only get a bargain at a BP station. So it's all been carved up. We know what we know what we're going to charge. We know what the fallout's going to be. We know what our cut's going to be. All we have to do is sit back and rake it in. Right. So don't tell so, me. Don't tell me that the guys at Standard have never had a price lower, ever, ever. BP's price is always lower than Standard's, and that's that's the way they do. That's the way the Chevron guys carve up the market. We forget because it didn't happen in our lifetimes. But yet, if you are a student of history, and again. Now you have to be, <laughs> again, you have to want to educate yourself, yeah. but go back and look at what the, uh, the oil companies and the automotive companies, General Motors and Standard Oil, did in Los Angeles. 
to get rid of the state does. Yep. The red line. The red line. They all that track that they're now putting back down again. It was there. It was there. <laughs> uh, in the 40s, in the 50s, they thought it'd be a good idea to rip it up. Who needed it? We were all going to be using cars. Ran on Broadway downtown, ran on Wilshire Boulevard. It ran in Santa Monica. Yeah. You could you could get on a streetcar and go anywhere in LA. And, and, they, and they shut it down for no they shut it shut it down for political reasons. They took they took it out and sold the cars. Want the and competition. Just shut down the company. Boom. Yeah, they didn't because they knew that as as gas prices went up, as traffic went up, that Car there was a viable alternative to using their gasoline. And what do you do if there's an alternative to using what you sell? You get rid of it. And you don't have to live downtown L.A. You can live in Reseda and, and drive over the hill, be there in no time. 40 minute commute. Come on. You can handle that. So. Don't tell me that it's out of the realm of possibility for these companies to pull something off like this. And, and if you're not going to put now, maybe they're great. Maybe they've gone to the point where they don't want anything to do with Trump anymore. But there's a, there's a hundred Trumps. And they're looking beyond Trump. And also their their defense is you think we're an American company because our executives are American and our name is American and our offices are in America. But we're not. We are a multinational company. Our product comes from all over the world. Our, our customers are everywhere in the world. Yeah, you got a high price gas in America right now. Maybe it'll go down, but it's been higher than that around the world. And people have been able to adjust to it and they, 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 they budget for it and they get around it and they manage and doing fine. Yeah. As long as we keep the price reasonable. You don't, have, the you, price, you don't hear people in France complaining about the uh, you're bitching on something. Dollar a gallon gas. These prices should have been like this years ago. We were selling it to you at a loss. We were doing you a favor. We can't do it anymore because of Putin's war. So, eight bucks. What are you going to do? Well, we hate to not, do it. We hate to do that, it. But you guys were all so stupid that you went out and you bought big, and you know, you had these nice sedans that everybody was cranking out, and the kids fit okay. Maybe they had minivans, but they were nice and aerodynamically designed. and they got 20 miles to the gallon, 25 miles to the gallon, even for a big vehicle. And instead you said, you know what? That's not good enough for me. No, nope. I need a truck. Even though I never haul anything in it, even though I, I don't own a farm, I need a pickup truck. And I don't and, want the bed to get scratched up. I want the paint back there to be nice. Okay. Right. And my pickup truck gets seven miles to the gallon eight miles to the gallon well you got a dodge huh yeah <laughs> but who cares because gas is a buck 75 a gallon two dollars a gallon i can do that i can uh, you know i fill up my my truck twice a week i go flying away from traffic lights faster than anybody else even before the old lady gets out of the crossbar I remember when Why? I used because to, I'm an American and I can do it. I used Why? to live in Boston. Used... Falls because it can. <laughs> and he did. And you couldn't have stopped him anyway. So what are you bitching you about? Yeah, no, he would have turned mean on you. You don't get a vote. You just think you do. You think you can just what your vote is which station are you going to buy your gas from? Well, we don't really care. It's going to work out for all of us. Okay. At, at least the Europeans were smart enough to say, well. You know, this gas is expensive. So, uh, you know, I like the big cars, but let's keep the sedans. Let's keep the, uh, let's keep the normal cars that get 25, 30, 35 miles a gallon. Let's do that. And I don't know let's, what the, I don't know what the percentage of electric cars is in Washington state, but I bet it's pretty good in Seattle and it's growing in all the major markets especially in the West where a more advanced society is want to live based on the. Uh, yeah, I think we're, I think we're 3% or something like that, which is among, uh, you know, California, I think leads the way. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, I think we're like three or 4% of of cars here and now electric and it'll grow you know one of the problems is now and this is something that biden's going to have to look at if you go to buy a tesla 
you don't get a tax break anymore. Just Tesla? Uh, well, you know, a GM also. Because the tax breaks have a ceiling. So many cars. Once you sell over that amount of cars, the buyer of the car does not get a tax break anymore. Is that a yearly thing or a final thing? You sold that seven. Uh, I think it's a model year. Yeah. Okay. So once you sell 15,000 2022 um, Chevrolet Bolts, that $4,500 or $7,000, whatever it is, tax, uh, tax uh, credit goes away. Ooh, that's tough. So now you're into the car. Now there's some local governments that are giving credit out um, and so on and so forth. But now you have to find a car that may not be the car that you want, but now you have to find a car that will still have a tax credit on it if you want to save that money. It's like you got to order one for next year. Most make sure, Tesla make sure you... people. And Ford's going to lose their tax credit here if they haven't already because the, they're They've got, I think, 40,000 uh, orders for the Lightning. Uh, so they're, they're already... Uh, so they're already at their, at their threshold. Yeah. For 2023. So part of the reason why people are buying electric is the tax break. You know, you can get, you can get a car down to... I mean, it, right now... If you buy a Chevrolet Bolt, either the sedan or the EUV, you can pretty much get that car to under $30,000. If you have, if you had the tax break, you could even get it lower. You get another $4,000, $5,000. You can you literally get into a Chevy Bolt for twenty five grand which is a steal. If you can find one. Um, I think there are, and I think they're, they're, they've started producing them again. You know, they stopped for a while because they were having trouble with the, the batteries. But uh, I think they fixed that. A friend of mine just bought, I said it was going to have difficulty buying something off the lot. They bought a Kia Sorento and like it very much. It's a hybrid. Yeah. Uh, did they get the plug-in? Yes. Great car. Great car. I love that car. I drove it uh, a number of weeks ago. I think it might be if the RAV4 is the best plug-in hybrid that's out there, the RAV4 Prime. Um, and it's a pretty good vehicle. The Sorento is right up next to it. Now, did they have to pay over dealer, uh, over dealer sticker for it? Probably. I don't know the details. Yeah. Yeah, I, Kia to me is uh, is a uh, is a great car, and well, the buying and selling the buying and selling of new cars is is a different game than it used to be, and uh, it's not a fair game anymore. If it ever well, was. it's all going to change. I, I will tell you right now that in the next ten years, uh, the auto dealer as we know it. Is going to go away. Uh, the the ca car companies are going to move to a Tesla model. You buy it from you, uh, you buy it online. It's one price. You'll go to a something that looks like a dealer uh, where they can do repairs and things like that. But there's going to be no nobody's going to be standing out there saying. You got to add this on. You got to add that on. You have to pay 10000 over. This, that, the other thing. That's all going to go away. It's an unnecessary burden on the system. Well, yeah. I mean, now it's going to be interesting to see how they accomplish it because they're going to eliminate a part of, uh, you know, a major part of a dealer's profit center, which is the F&I office. You know, people think you make money selling cars. You don't make they, a lot of money selling cars. The bank owns the car anyway. You make money selling the loan. You make money selling the protection plans. Do you know that the average car 
goes out of the showroom with five to seven thousand dollars worth of protection plans on it that they don't need. It, it's it's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. But you know, you get into that room and that is selling you. I mean, they sell you crap like a tire warranty. Um free air for the uh, life of your car. Free air? <laughs> yeah, you just go bring the car to the dealer, we'll fill it up. Well, that's something that they should do. But yet there's there's uh, policies that they sell, extended warranties and things like that, that for tires, for paint. For the undercoating. Don't forget yeah. the, the super undercoating. You know, it used to be, you, you know, you brought up a great a great thing. A great thing for, for the dealers is they were satisfied with selling you, uh, you know, 25 cents worth of undercoating for two or 300 bucks. Yep. They get on and they spray under the car and that's it. Now they don't even have to get dirty. They'll sell you a warranty for this, a warranty for that. They sell you numbers etching. Whoa. Where they etch the uh, your VIN number into the glass on the car. So if somebody steals your car and somebody else is driving the glass, you know, driving the, the car down the street, and they take the glass and put it in another car, you'll be uh, <laughs> you'll be compensated. <laughs> Well, you're comprehensive that you have to have on the car insurance. You have to have on the car. Covers that already. Take the minimum and get out of there. So I, I, I would never buy car. And plus, you can go and shop those warranties. If you really feel like, okay, I want to get a warranty. I'm not sure about this car. I want to get a warranty that extends past the dealer warranty. You can go online and buy them. Figure it out yourself. Figure it out yourself, and you're not going to, you know, there's no law that says you have to buy that warranty from the dealer. But the dealers can have done, consistently done this. They've really stepped it up in these uh, in the times of trouble here because, number one, they, they add on to the dealer pack on the car, whatever the... And then on top of it, they make half the commission on that warranty. So if you yeah, buy I mean, a warranty for your car for two thousand bucks, the dealer's making a grand. The salesman might make a hundred dollars on the sale of a car. He's making the dealer is making more money off of the warranties that they're selling you than they are off for the car. Yep, you're right. That's why they can sell you a car. Um, you know, uh, you know, you always go and you see those things below dealer invoice. Right. Well, yeah, they can sell to you below dealer invoice because number one, they probably got an incentive from the manufacturer to sell the car. So that dropped, you know, they're getting cash there. Then they're selling the warranties or the other crap that they add on. So the car companies have had it with this stuff. The car companies really feel like their image is being sullied. And more so over the last two years, because so many dealers showed their true colors. And it wasn't pretty. And it wasn't pretty. So they're now figuring out, well, how do we get out of these dealer agreements and move this thing over to an online system? Car Things like Carvana and um, uh, uh, the other few uh, car used car services have worked so well with people now that there's problems there too, but the manufacturers figure they can work out the kinks. They'll figure uh, it's better for us in the long run. We'll figure it out. Right. And, and it's much more of a pleasurable experience. So many people are used to buying stuff online now that if you can avoid going into the car dealer. Oh God. And you can just sit down at your computer and order your car. And maybe go to a go to a, a a place that has those cars sitting there, like the you know the Ford Apple Store, right? So you can test drive. So you can test drive and see if it's the right car for you. But there's no salesman. It's just a you know like a, an Apple geek. And you buy the deal, and you buy the financing, and you're on your own. 
and you, you know, and you, you go on and they'll ask if you want the protection. All you got to do is click no. Do you want this? No. You want that? No. You want that? No. So now two things happen. The dealers don't have to keep the inventory because we're also moving to a system like it used to be back in the 50s. You go into a dealer and you order the car. You say, I want this color, this equipment, this stuff, that stuff, this stuff. And then you wait four weeks and your car comes. I like it. And you, you virtually order your own car. Custom paint if you want it. Chartreuse green, however, Maserati. However, uh, whatever's on the on the computer pa- on the page on your uh, on your screen, you click the boxes. You order what you want. Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. You're not buying what somebody else ordered. Now you're buying what you ordered. Vinny, I got to say adios for today, and I want just want to thank our listeners and viewers. I won't be with you on Wednesday. Got a doctor's appointment that I can't miss. Trying to get my earring fixed, and um, they're not I'll, shining a flashlight in one end and it's coming out the other, is it? Like always, of course. <laughs> of course. Well, listen, pal, you take care of yourself. You get. The- and I, I won't see you Wednesday, and I'm sorry about that. But I'll see you for Freaky Fractures Friday. Yeah, um, unless something really crazy breaks with the hearings, in which case maybe we'll try to do it. And we can go, we can like go on later than that. We can go later. on yeah, Wednesday we'll, late, yeah. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. But yeah, uh, tell the doctor I said hello. He loves you just the way you are. Uh, no, I think he'd love me better if I would. Every doctor I've ever met said I'd love you a lot better if you were 100 pounds lighter. So, Bring your cat, <laughs> we'll scan it. I have to bring, I'm bringing all my cats. We're going to scan them. <laughs> Just don't let it meow when they get into that machine. If you, you don't know. have a cat, bring a neighbor's cat. We're going to scan that baby. And of course, we are the cat scan leaders. All right, man. Uh, be well, and I will talk to you on Friday. See ya. If the Lord's will in the creek don't rise. Thank you all for listening. Uh, and, and you'll need a little extra this week. Peace, love, and Manischewitz. I'll have a double. What a wine. What a wine. <laughs>